Hello everyone, let's see static keyword in C++ in this video. Now when I say static in C++ there are two things, one is static data member and other one is static member function. So we are going to implement both of them in this demo. So you can consider this class complex for that. Class complex has two data members, one is real part, other one is imaginary part. And there are three member functions, one is default constructor, parameterized constructor is there and display function is there. In the definition, default constructor is making real and imaginary parts zero, parameterized constructor is initializing real and imaginary with appropriate values R and I and display function is displaying the complex number. So this class we have already implemented in previous video or some of the previous video and I'm going to use that for this demo. So suppose I have different objects of complex class C1, C2, C3. So C3 is created using parameterized constructor 10, 20. Now let me just check whether class is running. So for that I will display the objects. Complex.cpp is the file name g++ complex.cpp dot slash a dot out. So it is displaying all the objects. Now what I want, I want to implement one program which will count the number of objects which are created for the complex class. So for that what I will do, for this program the output should be 3 because there are 3 objects of complex class. So if I want to count the number of objects of complex class, I, I need to keep one counter which will, in, which will be incremented whenever the object is created. So I will take one variable say cnt which is counter variable and I will increment that whenever object is created. So where should I write the cnt++ statement? Now what happens when the object is created. So you know that whenever the object is created immediately constructor is called to initialize the data members of the object. So what I will do in the constructor I will increment the cnt value. So whenever constructor is called cnt will be incremented. So cnt is actually number of times constructor is getting called that means number of objects created. So I have written cnt++ in each constructor. Right now there are only two constructors but if you have few more constructors there also you have to write the cnt++ and I will print this value in the main cnt value. Now the thing is that where should I declare this cnt? How should, de uh, how should I declare that cnt? One way is I can declare it as global variable int cnt and I will say cnt++ in constructors and in the main function I will print cnt value. So here number of objects. g++ compile run. You will see that number of objects are 3. So this is ok. So using global variable cnt as a global variable I have solved this problem. But in object oriented programming structure global declaration should be avoided as far as possible. So as far as possible I, I, I will go for data member and member function. So instead of declaring cnt as a global variable it is better if I declare that cnt inside the class and then I will print that value in the main. Now cnt is private so I cannot, um, I cannot print it inside main function. Uh, so let's put it inside public first. Then also I have to write some object dot cnt in main. So here either I have to say c1 dot cnt or c2 dot cnt something like that. So now let's check whether the program is running. Now you will see that number of objects it is printing garbage value since cnt is not initialized. Now where you will initialize the cnt you, will init you can initialize that inside the constructor but still it will not give the output because when I, when I, write, when I make this cnt as a data member of class then each object will have different value for that cnt. That means let's try it suppose here I write cnt equals to 0 and here also I write cnt equals to 0 then it's printing number of object 1 because in this case how will be the object diagram previously okay you can imagine the diagram for the object 
So suppose there are three objects of complex class. Say these are the three objects C1, C2, C3. And now each object will have three parts inside that. One is real, other one is imaginary and third one is CNT. So this is how the objects will look like. So suppose first one is real, then this one is imaginary part and this block represents the CNT. So same thing is true for other objects also. So what happens here, each object has different copy of CNT and that copy is initialized to 0 inside the constructor and then it is incremented to 1. I don't want this thing to happen because CNT, CNT is the variable which is counting number of objects. It should not be separate for each object but it should be common for each object. That means I want object diagram something like this. So each object will have separate real and imaginary part and CNT will be common for each of the object. That means there will be single copy of CNT which is common for C1, C2 and C3. So here this C1 object is using CNT variable and same CNT variable is used by C2 object and the same CNT variable is also used by C3 object. So for that what to do? So for that what I need to do instead of declaring this CNT as ordinary data member I have to declare that as a static data member. So I will write it something like this. So basically I will declare it under private since data members are generally private. So I will, I will declare this CNT as a private data member and static. And I will increment that data member inside the constructor. So in the default constructor and parameterized constructor, there will be CNT++. So now there is only one copy of CNT which is shared by all the objects. And the same copy will be incremented whenever I say CNT++. So this is the significance of static data members in C++. For static data member in C++, only one copy exists which is shared by all the objects of the class. Now to print this CNT value, let me write one function also. Suppose there is one more function I write which is show CNT function inside the class and I will define it. Return type is void, class name is complex, show CNT is the name of the function and I will say see out CNT here. So number of objects. And I will call that show CNT function in the main. That means inside main, I have to call show CNT function using some object, either c1.cnt, uh, c1.showcnt, or c2.showcnt, or c3.showcnt. So now, if I compile, okay. Now it is throwing error. Now this error is undefined reference to complex scope solution CNT. It is, it is not a compile time error. It is linking error undefined reference is linking error. Now why this error is there? This error is there because there will be an issue regarding memory allocation of CNT. Now you you can again visualize the diagram. C1, C2, CN, C3 are the objects. So when the memory is allocated for C1, C2, C3, memory will be allocated when the objects are declared. So whenever C1 is declared, memory for C1 is allocated. Whenever C2 is declared, memory for C2 is allocated. And when C3 is declared, memory for C3 is allocated. But when the memory will be allocated for CNT variable, for CNT, memory allocation should happen before either of the object because CNT is common for each of the object. So CNT is having single copy since it is a static data member and for static data member, memory allocation should happen before the memory allocation of any object. In this, in our code, the memory allocation is not taking place and that's why it is throwing undefined reference error, which is linking error. So to 
allocate the memory for static data member you have to write this line outside the class in source file it will be data type of static data member so here it is integer then class name is complex scope position and cnt so this line will allocate the memory for cnt now you can initialize that data member to some value but by default statics are zero so in this demo there is no need of equals to zero if you want to initialize it with some other value then you have to write equals to some value so now if i compile it is getting compiled and if i run it is also showing me the output number of objects three so that is okay now in the main function if i see the function call c1 dot c1 dot show cnt even it can be c2 dot show cnt or c3 dot show cnt output is going to be same so it is it is more sensible if i am able to call this show cnt function without object now why why i should call it without object because show cnt is it's not functionality which is associated with any object it is showing the number of objects created so it is not to any specific object so i should be able to call that function without object so for that i have to declare that show cnt function also as static and this is nothing but static member functions functions in c++ so suppose if i declare the show cnt function as static here then even i can call that function without object now how to call that function i will call it using class name class name scope solution function name so complex scope solution show cnt now if i compile and run still the output is coming and even if i do not have single object suppose i do not have any object in the main function now if show cnt is show cnt is not a static member function then you you would not be able to call that function because you do not have any object but since it is a static you can call it simply using class name scope solution since you don't need object to call static function so here if i compile and run it will give the number of objects are zero so this is how static data members and static member functions are used in c++ so if you like the video please like it share it and do subscribe to my channel Thank you.